Hello and welcome to another Roblox tutorial. In this video, I will be showing you how to use vector forces, which is a type of constraint in Roblox Studio. At the end of the video, I'll be showing you how to use vector forces to make an anti-gravity effect to your parts, so stick around. But before we get into the video, I just want to thank you all for the boost in subscribers we've had recently, and if you enjoy the content, make sure to like and subscribe. And also, join my Discord server, links in the description, you can get scripting help, we can just talk about Roblox, talk about code, whatever. So make sure to join. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So a vector force in Roblox Studio is a constraint that applies a force in the direction of a vector. And it's the equivalent of a legacy body force. If you don't know what that is, that's fine. But it was just, it's an old way of applying a force to a part in Roblox. But nowadays we use vector forces. So I'm going to make a part here. Here's my part. I'm going to move it up a little bit. There we go. And the way you create a vector force is go to model, then to create, then go to vector force. So here I have this little green thing. This is your attachment. The arrow is where the default force will be applied. So I'm just going to put my force right there. And if you can't see your vector force, make sure to turn on constraint details. Draw on top is optional. I guess I'll just leave it off. Like you can see the difference. There you go. So here's our vector force. And if we look in the properties here, the basic properties. And this arrow just tells you where it's going to go. So I'm going to play this just to show you the vector force takes it that way. So in its default state, without changing anything about your force, no matter where you orient your part, so let me just put it there, it always goes in the direction of that arrow. It does not change. And this is really useful to make relative forces. So let's actually get into the force. Here we go. And you can see there are a bunch of properties. So let's first start at this force property. This is a vector 3 telling you where the force is going to go in our vector force. So you may be looking at, okay, it's x, y, and z. That's pretty normal, right? You have, you know, y is up and down, and x is across, and z is like front and back. But the x, y, and z of this force are determined by the primary and secondary axis of your attachment 0. So here's my attachment 0. You can see it right here. The yellow axis, the, the yellow arrow, is the primary axis, which is also the x axis, and the orange axis is the y axis. So if I were to take my attachment, you can position and orient an attachment just like a normal part. If I were to take it and angle it upward, you can see the force moves with it. So let's just play this. It flips around because the force is bringing it upwards. And this also brings up another point. The vector forces are applied on attachment zero. They're not applied at the middle of your part. They're applied exactly on attachment zero. So this allows you with your body forces, let me just move it this way. This allows you to make your part spin just by applying a force. So you can see when I play this that the part spins because the arrow is pointing that way. So it like pulls the part and since the force is only be applied on the edge of the part, it makes it turn. And you can change this behavior in the properties tab. So for example, if I want to only apply the force in the center of part or the center of mass, I can just check apply center of mass. And if I were to run this, it would only go forward. And also, one big thing to note is this relative to property. This basically just tells you what the force should be applied relative to. So usually I stick to attachment zero and world. You could do attachment one. It brings you another property there. But I just like to go with world sometimes or attachment zero. So the difference between world and attachment zero is the axes of our force vector when you set it to world are indeed oriented to the world x, y, and z. So if I were to change it back to 
attachment zero, you can see the arrow changes. And if I were to change it back to world, and like let's say I set it to zero, and I set Y to a thousand, this would be pointing up regardless of the orientation of the part. So if I were to rotate the part, you can see the vector force is still pointing up no matter where I rotate the part. And this can be useful in some situations, it just depends. But make sure if you just want a force like going in a constant direction, you set it relative to, to world. And that's basically all you need to know in regards to the properties of our vector force. So when it comes to scripting your ve vector force, it's very straightforward. A one thing to note though is most of the time I would only change my force property. All the other properties really should be set by the beginning, I guess, other than enabled because you might want to turn your force on and off. So I'm just going to go create a script in my part. Zoom in a little bit. Let's define some variables. I'm going to give myself some space. We're going to find local part would be equal to script dot parent, and then local force. So let's do vector force would be equal to part dot vector force. There we go. So this is our vector force. You can access all the properties like you could normally do. You can set the vector force dot force equals vector three dot new zero a thousand zero. You could also set the relative to relative to, and this is an enum actuator relative to, and you can set it to whatever. So make sure to make your relative to an enum because it's enum actu actuator relative to because it's attachment zero, attachment one, or world, do that whatever. I usually never change that. I don't ever need to change that. If I need to change that, I usually just have two, two or more vector forces that each have their own like spot to work. And so now I'm going to show you how to make your part have like an anti-gravity effect using our vector force. So you want to make sure with your force that apply at center of mass is true and it's relative to the world. And we're just going to go back into our script and we're going to set the force. So what you want to set the force to is a vector 3 dot new 0 and then for the y you want to do workspace dot gravity times part get mass. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. So here's our anti-gravity. And this just basically offsets workspace.gravity because obviously in your game, you could change workspace.gravity to whatever you want. But the thing is, is what if you only want certain parts to have anti-gravity? That's when you would use this sort of force thing. And so if I were to run this, let me just go back here. If I were to run this, you can see the part does not move. It looks like it's anchored, but just to show you, I'm going to go actually play it. And so now if I were to hit the part, you can see it maintains all of its momentum. And there's no air resistance in Roblox, so it'll just keep on going like that forever. And one thing to note about this is you can just multiply this y value by whatever you want so i'm going to say 0.5 so now the part has half the gravity of earth and then if you well i assume it's earth it's just the default gravity in the workspace and you can also change this to like a bigger value so it falls quicker. But you can do whatever you want with that. And I actually use this in my hover car video. I use this as my basis for my hover car to orient it, its altitude. And it worked very well. And this is something that's super useful. I use it a lot. And it's a good intro to vector forces. So that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. It was kind of short, but vector forces are intentionally made a simple thing by Roblox because they can be used by whomever or whatever you want. And they're just generally useful and easy to use. So this is just an experiment. If you guys like this video, make sure to comment down below because I might make some more constraint tutorials. Some people in my Discord server have been asking about that. Because constraints are kind of weird in Roblox. They take a while to learn, especially like attachments. But make sure to comment if you enjoyed this type of video and you want to see more 
Roblox forces, constraints, whatever. And make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I hope you have a nice day, and goodbye.